okay in this video let's take our test one more step ahead so right now we have certain test cases that are <coughs> running in parallel now what we want to do is we want to run these test cases with various browsers so right now these test cases are running only with Firefox browser because here we are instantiating Firefox browser now in order to do this change how the test should run let's move the setup part let's uh, have this setup part made dynamic so let me remove this setup tag uh, attribute from here and let's take a parameter here and we say browser name now this is the name that is going to tell to this setup which browser should actually be initialized so what we will do here is we will say if browser name that we are getting if that is equal to IE then we will be saying driver is equal to new Internet Explorer driver else if if it is if this browser name equals Chrome then we will say this is driver equals new Chrome driver in all other cases if we don't see get a browser name let's say Firefox we are making as a default and let's also introduce Safari if browser name dot equals Safari then we can say driver is equal to new Safari driver and let's fix the references for that control dot enter and we can see the Safari is also added same way if you want to extend the support to Opera and all then it's just a matter of adding one more browser dot equals and we say Opera <coughs> then we say driver is equal to new opera driver that's all with that we have nailed the first problem of <coughs> instantiating the browser based on the browser name that we send now let's figure out who is going to call this function and make the test kind of uh, data driven or controllable uh, with which browser we want to run it now let's take example of our login test here we have a test now this test we want to run with various browsers so what we should be doing is this test should be expecting a parameter browser name and based on that browser name this test is going to call the setup method and it will say this is the browser with which I want to run this particular test so this is the change we have to make in every test that we want to make data driven now after having this uh, let's figure out who will pass this browser name to this test case so there is another attribute called test case source now this attribute what it requires from us is it requires a source name which is essentially a static function inside this class or inside any other class so what we are going to say is this will tell uh, uh, browser to run with ideally we can give any name here because this is just a function name so we can say public static and return type should be i enumerable and it will be a string and our function name is browser to run with now this is a function that is responsible for giving us the browser name with which the test should be running so what logic we should write inside the function is for now let's me let me hard code the browser names and then we will see how to pick this browser name from a configuration file browsers equals let's create an array and we create array of chrome and firefox and after creating this array we'll write a for each loop and in this for each loop we will say for each string browser b in browsers what we should do is we should say yield return b that's all with that our this particular test has become a data driven test and this test will be called with chrome first and then firefox let's validate that let's do a build solution and when we build our solution we will notice here verify valid login test is equipped to run with chrome and firefox now since we want all of our test cases to be uh, to be data driven in terms of browser selection let's cut this function from here and move it to the test base class so in test base we are going to add the static function which is responsible for telling us which browser to run with and after doing so here we will need one more change the now the test case data source is browser to run with and we have to give 
the class which is having that so we can say test base okay I think there is some uh, confusion here uh, wait we will fix that in a short while we will figure out what uh, it takes so let's take a look at the documentation of this function and test uh, of this attribute sorry so it takes a source name and certain properties okay type is the first parameter uh, that it takes and then the source name so ideally the type of that I was writing it should be written in the beginning so test base should come here and browser to run with now this is a way of telling this function that who is going to give you the browser name value is function browser to run with which is located inside test base class so let's copy this and go to other test methods that we have let's put it here as well and we say string browser name and inside every test we do a setup and we call it browser name because first setup will happen the browser will launch and then we will continue with the rest of activities so second test also we have made like that um, this test is not yet automated but still let's go ahead and make these changes to every test so that our all our tests are capable of running with uh, a dynamic browser <coughs> so what we are doing is we are changing this signature and we are pasting it here same way we go to testimonial tests are done let's go to another class which is web tables so here also let me select this paste this here and second test also that we have at bottom in case you automate that later on based on the series discussion so this setup is mandatory to be kept here and third category of test that we have uh, which we have already fixed so let's just copy this attribute and keep in every uh, particularly every test case so here we go and on test we put this attribute and on this test also we go ahead and put this attribute so our web tables has it login tests okay the bottom one does not have it yet so let's make the bottom test also to be a kind of test which is runnable with every or any browser so let's select this let's put this here awesome so we have made all our test cases to be uh, data driven so let's build our solution again and this time we will see our all our tests are taking the parameter of chrome or firefox and in case we go and give it a run if we run all our test cases then we will see the test cases will kind of go and run with two different browsers and this is the parallel execution we are seeing that's happening so three test cases we see running with chrome browsers and some tests we have not written the logic yet so they will be very quickly running and exiting so we can see how amazing they are running so awesome uh, and we will see in no time this particular execution will end up so let me see how many tests have been executed till now okay they are executing one by one in a very quick succession okay so we are at login test so test step for login will be followed and we can see our 12 test cases have executed in no time now ideally in these 12 test cases we <coughs> sorry about that so in ideally in these test cases kind of which have no logic written in them we should be uh, throwing an exception so that they are marked as failed that they are not yet implemented throw no new not implemented so this will make sure like these tests are not reported in a wrong way that they are passing because these tests are not yet implemented so ideally they should be failing they should be giving us the clear picture that these tests you have not yet implemented so let me go ahead and put this exception everywhere so that we are not under the false impression that we have all the test cases automated so here also it is kept let's go here and let's post this statement here throw not implemented and this second test is already done testimonials done validate login the second test not implemented awesome so there were only three test cases which are not implemented here because the browsers are split up so that's why we are saying the more number so great we have reached a step where we are able to execute our tests in parallel by making one small change 
so now let's do another change that we don't want every time to be modifying the code to be writing the code here to pick the browsers so this setting we want to control externally from a file so that whenever we make changes to that file that is the browser that is selected so let's go ahead we have multiple options here one option is we can add a text file here and text file will be read to figure out which browsers we have to run against another option is we can add an XML file or third option is we can have kind of an Excel sheet which is controlling these browsers behavior I'm going to pick one of the options I'm going to add an XML file we can go to new item and that XML is also a file which is nicely understood by Visual Studio and that such a file is called resource file so let me search for a resource file and where will we find that we can typically search here if we say resource enter we get a resource file so we can say this is uh, framework setting ideally we don't have a framework yet so we can say uh, automation settings that is what this resource file is going to contain and here the first setting that I'm going to write let me call that this is browsers to run with and the value let's give Safari comma or uh, since I'm on Windows so let me uh, put IE Firefox that's it so right now I'm adding only two browsers if tomorrow we want to run with three browsers all we need to do is we need to go and edit this resource file which is nothing but an XML file if I show you right click and if I say edit with <coughs> notepad plus plus then you will see this is no more than a kind of XML file and the edit of XML file will kind of become very easy because all we have to do is we have to change this value from IE Firefox to IE Firefox Chrome and that can be done uh, without even recompiling the code we just change this setting on runtime and when we execute our code it will be perfectly running with three browsers after we have changed it outside let's refresh it and we see three browsers are there okay great so now we have a file which has these browsers values and now how do we get these browser values from file is because we have used a resource file Visual Studio makes it very easy for us to read from a resource file so we can simply say uh, here that let's go here and we say automation settings dot browsers to run with and that will give us the string which is a comma separated string let's do a dot split here and dot split will take character parameters from us so if we simply say a comma then ideally they should split all the values and it should assign to the string array now let's go ahead and build this solution and now you will notice if I build this solution it is still picking the values from the file and all the test cases that we are seeing are generated out of that now if I go and change the file let me go ahead here and let me change the file only to Firefox and now after saving it if we go and do a rerun all you will see this time the test will be running only with Firefox no recompilation of code was required and now we will see the test will run uh, in parallel in only one browser okay Firefox test has failed the first test because that might be not implemented test now you see the web table test is running then another is login test started and <coughs> then again we are running testimonial test and awesome so three of the tests have passed and three have failed so great that is how we kind of make our test run with multiple browsers thanks for watching that's the end of this series which has shown you how to run tests in parallel plus how do we control the browser from a setting Thanks for watching. Have fun. Bye-bye.